Hello everyone, my name is Philippe. I'm a huge fan of Barbara Streisand and I'm making a series of 12 very, very important Barbara Streisand albums, the ones that I think you must absolutely listen to or re-listen to, rediscover like I did certainly. And today is no exception with One Voice, the incredible concert that Barbara Streisand did in 1986 in her very own home in Malibu. The album was released in 1987 and it was subtitled the first full-length concert in 20 years. Of course it made reference to the last one which was the Central Park happening in Central Park in 1967 which occurred on June 17, which is the exact date of my birthday. So when I read that on the back cover of the of the album as a young boy, I was I felt like I was chosen. And um, so this album I decided to to speak of um, because I heard while I was researching all of the Barbra Streisand music and what to me were the best albums and the ones that I really wanted to speak of and the ones I really wanted to share, I discovered a lot of people who um, react to Barbara Streisand singing on YouTube for the very first time. And these are people who are in their 20s and a lot of them go, oh my God, I didn't know she sang. And it, I just thought it was so cute. And uh, one of them was, um, uh, uh, two young people absolutely adorable who loved Streisand as an actress and who had only seen her in uh, Road Trip and in Meet the Folkers and so they w had no idea she was a singer and the music that they were reacting to was Evergreen sung on this album and I as a fan always believed that the best and only version of Evergreen was the one from the A Star Is Born soundtrack, which I made um, a little video on. And when I heard this one again, and especially when I saw the reaction of these two young people just absolutely in awe, thinking, oh my God, and then they look back and see and they realize she made a ton of albums and they had absolutely no idea that she was a singer. Um, it just made me want to re-listen to this album and then I realized how incredible uh, this album was and how fantastic and so I really wanted to um, spend some time on it. Uh, the concert was in Barbara Streisand's home and uh, she uh, there's what's really beautiful is that it begins with the song Somewhere and before the song you hear the crickets of the outside and you really get a feel that this is recorded outdoors in this beautiful setting. There were 500 guests, but each one had to pay $5,000. Barbara Streisand, I must start by saying how beautiful, beautiful she looks there. She is in top form. She's tanned and her skin is glowing. She's stunning and the white outfit, the beautiful lights. And so, as I say, she begins with somewhere uh, and the her entrance and the applause last throughout half of the song. And no, I'm joking. And it is just so thrilling. She giggles the way she, she does because she is a shy person. And then she starts the song and she, it's just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. So it's a beautiful version. And then she explains why she returned to singing. And this is uh, also an album uh, where she says that she never thought she was going to be on stage again. Uh, thankfully, we had quite a few series of, of world tours after that, and they're they were all uh, exceptional and one of them uh, in 2006 came to Paris so I was able to see her for the first time in my life. Uh, after that she goes on straight onto Evergreen in which I have to do this mia culpa because hearing it again I discovered how beautiful and how sensitive and how delicate she sings it and um, it's just absolutely gorgeous and I love the beginning where people start to clap and she says you know it huh and uh, it's just so cute and 
really lovely. Then Something's Coming from the Broadway album, which was her latest release at the time. And uh, then she sings People and she breaks People to have a little uh, monologue where she explains the importance of the words and, and the meaning of the song throughout her life because she's sung People every time live. And um, it's really lovely again send in the clowns which has never been one of my favorite songs i never understood the meaning of that song um and uh here it just is absolutely lovely uh it i think she's very much at ease or as much as she can be on a stage because she is at home afterwards we have an amazing gift which is singing Somewhere Over the Rainbow, the only time she's ever sung it, and also, as she says, very rarely heard the verse, uh, the opening, and um, it's really sung magnificently and so differently than we expect, because anybody who sings Somewhere Over the Rainbow, except for Patti LaBelle, is going to have to sound a little bit like Judy Garland, because it's just one of those things. It's just... Anything Judy sings is just, um, you know, nothing short of a miracle. But Barbara Streisand is able to sing it with her lightness and her touch. And she just makes it her own song, even though she said, I can't possibly sing that song, but except for that night. And then she breaks into Guilty. And what kind of fool? And of course, she is joined by Barry Gibb, who comes running on stage to tremendous applause. And they together have an incredible chemistry and they really, really work beautifully together. And it really sound, and they sound great. They sound absolutely wonderful. And um, this brings me to why I'm not going to discuss Guilty out of the 12 albums that um, I've chosen. Not that I don't love it and not that it's not an important album. It was her best-selling album to this day, but simply because it's an album in which she had practically no input. It was brought to her. Barry Gibb said, you sing each song 10 times and I take care of everything. And because she was working on Yentl, she was thrilled to be able to do that. She loved the way Barry Gibb took charge. As she says, he was in charge and he was sexy. And uh, it's just an incredible album. So I decided not to talk about Guilty except now. So Guilty, which is one of my favorite Barbra Streisand duets and um, What Kind of Fool absolutely great. Uh, Guilty, by the way, is the only song on the album that's written by the Bee Gees, Barry, uh, Robin and Maurice. The other ones were written by either two or either just Barry Gibb and someone else. Uh, then she sings, Papa, can you hear me? And she dedicates this song to all the men who have brought peace in this world, because this is what the whole concert is about. It's a benefit concert. She wants to um, make people aware of uh, the fact that uh, a lot of arms are being uh, sold and, and, and that there's only preparing war while people are starving, while schools are being closed, while uh, people are, are have lack of water and shelter. And so this is what's important to her, as well as the environment. So the father figures is a very important statement in this concert. The Way We Were, which she sings again magnificently, and it's just so refreshing to hear her. Again, this is a small orchestra. When she uh, this, uh, when she presents the orchestra, she presents one man as the backup vocal group. And there's only one singer. Who needs more when you're Barbra Streisand? Um, uh, it's a New World, which is um, a song that she also has only sung on this album live. And uh, it's a very, very beautiful song written by Harold Arlen, as well as, um, of course, uh, Somewhere Over the Rainbow. That song... It's a new song, and a new Streisand song anyway. And Happy Days Are Here Again. And this is the thing that I love about this version uh, is that she explains that her very first 
interpretation of Happy Days Are Here Again was sung just like the movie version in a very ironic and cynical way because it was written during the, the Great Depression and here she sings it with hope and you absolutely hear that and this is why Barbara Streisand is the one and only voice because she can change lyrics by singing the same thing but she can really make you think something else and and then she goes on to sing America the Beautiful, which is, it was the first time I ever heard uh, that song, America the Beautiful, which I think is just so magnificent. It's a hymn. It is just so wonderful. Uh, and you can hear how Barbara Streisand loves her country um, and loves the world and wants to make a change. And she makes the audience join in with her, which um, they dare. I mean, you know, try and sing along with Barbara uh, is not an easy feat, but she does and uh, they certainly do. And it ends the concert absolutely beautifully. And so this is why one voice I thought needed to be uh, shared with you. It is a beautiful, beautiful concert and it is an intimate moment with Barbara Streisand um, and uh, if you get the record it's quite a quite a deal because it's not five thousand dollars and I just looked up as a joke five thousand dollars today is eighteen thousand dollars of today of the time so it's quite a bit of money it's absolutely absolutely worth it so I hope you give it a listen and I'll be back next Sunday with my very last Barbara Streisand album. It's, it's, it's terrible because I want to speak of every single one of them. And it is an album that is just so special to me because it is the very first one I ever heard. And it's the very first time I heard Barbara Streisand's voice and fell madly in love with her, like I hope you will all do. Uh, but I know that many of you are longtime fans of Barbara. And so I hope to see you very soon. Thank you. Thank you for your support. I'll see you next week.